Mark, the whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a learning disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them to stem out to something. My name is Keith Andrew and this is episode 968. That is right, 968, my very first guest as a upcoming independent podcast host. All information will be in the bottom of the description. Make sure to like and support his work. Our second guest is a TV producer. He has his own network just like I do. We're going to hear more about him. But if you're watching this on all social medias, if you're watching, like, share, and comment. Because we would love to interact with you. When we come back from this commercial break, we're going to hear some recommendations. Hi, this is Dave Brunner. A lot of people know me as DB. I was a talent agent, still am for 30 years, and also the president and CEO of DB Television Network. I'm being interviewed by the Keith Andrew and the Keith Andrew Network uh, today, and it's a fantastic interview. It's great to be on with Keith, and uh, I think you'll enjoy this, uh, this next few minutes very much. Hi, my name is Andrew Morrison. I'm a voiceover artist and host of the Voiceover Coffee Shop. And I just want to thank Keith for all that he's doing for this wonderful community. And thanks for having me on the show. We had a great time. As you heard from uh, recommendations from the beginning of your show, welcome. Dave, it's a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. No, thank you. The, the pleasure and honor is mine, Keith. And one thing you mentioned off the air, you've been in the industry for 30 years, a talent agency for an amazing 30 years. And that's absolutely a great example of passion and hard work. Thank you. You know, it's funny, when I celebrated the 30th anniversary this year, um, people were asking me, did you really think that when you started the agency, did you think that you were going to have the agency for 30 years? And I'm like, no, I, I, I said, uh, looking back, I think that I said I'm, I was, I was going to start the talent agency try it for a year or two, see how it was. And I thought at that time it would probably go back into television, which is where I was, or or go back in the radio or something like that. And all of a sudden you kind of, you know, you're doing your job and you wake up one day and you say, oh my God, I've been uh, I've been in the agency for 30 years. So um, I really, I'm, I'm delighted that I've been, that I've had the agency for 30 years. But when I started it, I had no idea that, that I was going to be there that long. You know, you know for me, for me, I've been doing the Key Fancy Network for almost 10 years, so I still have a long way to go to catch up. But when I think about people with 30 years in the industry, there's a lot of great professionals, and I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. You look at Chris Jericho, who's been doing this for 30 years. You look at The Undertaker. He retired, but he was doing it for 30 years. You look at... He didn't celebrate it, but I know I think it's been 30 or so. You look at Sting. You know, you look at so many great wrestlers, but it's kind of like, well, let me ask you this. Do you agree or disagree that with 30 years of experience, you constantly have to reinvent yourself? Yes, um, I, I agree. In fact, that's how um, that's how the network, uh, my network, DBTV, started. Uh, we we reinvented ourselves um, during the pandemic um, in February of 2020. Uh, I had about a hundred plus clients, and we were kind of stuck. Nobody was going anywhere. Nobody was hiring. Uh, I had some sports, a lot of sports play by play guys. Nobody was doing sports. Uh, nobody was hiring, and it looked like it was going to be that way for. A long time, probably till the end of the year. So it was. We got to. We got to start doing something different. How are we going to do it? We can't sit and not send our tapes out for uh, for a year. What are we going to do? We have to reinvent ourselves. How do we stay relevant out there? And I came up with the idea of the uh, television network, and I'm glad I did. Um, when I started the television network, it was really more of a. Um, I, I don't want to say a publicity stunt, but I thought that it would be a great PR for the agency. 
It would also be a great way for my uh, clients to stay busy by uh, keeping doing content. And I also thought it would be great that when they, when people started hiring again, that the news directors would say, well, what have you been doing the last six or nine months? And I knew a lot of people really weren't doing anything. They were kind of sitting on their hands. My clients could say, hey, I was doing uh, a TV show or I was doing a podcast like you're doing or whatever. I thought that would be a plus for my clients and we could use it as an advantage. I really didn't know that a year and a half down the line, the network would you know, be, be huge and we could actually uh, make money, both my clients and myself with it. When we started it, monetizing wasn't a word that we even thought about. It was more of a, hey, it's a playground for my clients. It's a playground for us. Let's have fun with it. Let's see what we can do. We never, I don't think anybody ever sat and said, geez, I wonder if I can make money from this, or I wonder if I'm going to be doing this after the pandemic. It was more of a split second, hey, let's do it now. Let's see what we can do. Let's develop content, see what happens. And the thank goodness the, uh, you know, the, the network just took off, and uh, we were so happy. And now I'm at a point where, as I said, we've got over 80 shows. I think we started with 13 or 15. And now we have over 80 shows, uh, Monday, Monday through Friday schedule, Saturday schedule, Sunday schedule. Uh, you know, we have East Coast and West Coast ad agencies. I mean, we're just so delighted that uh, you know, people like watching what we're putting out. And my hosts are, are fantastic. They love doing great shows. And you know, the, 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 I think the, the stat that I'm most proud of, I don't want to take time away from Andrew here, um, but uh, I, the, the stat that I'm most proud of is, we get analytics every day and the average person watches a network uh, for 13 minutes. Uh, when people watch us, they watch us for 80 minutes at a time, which is incredible. And I, I think that's great. I think the two reasons why is one um, we have great shows, but the other reason is, is that we program our shows back to back to back. We have all our cooking shows together, four hours of cooking shows, three hours of travel shows together our health and wellness exercise shows in the morning are back to back. So when somebody sits down, they kind of realize, okay, I'm sitting down and I'm going to be seeing five or six shows that I like in that particular, you know, whether it's travel, whether it's uh, food or whatever, they're not going to sit down, watch a show. And then, then the next show is a sitcom. Then the next one is a drama or the next one is a repeat of something else. People know that, Oh, I'm going to be able to watch all those shows in a row. I think that's why we're, we have the 80 minutes for an average viewer, which is an incredible number, but it's great. No, I absolutely agree. And as I said to you off the air, I actually brought to you two great candidates who wants to be a part of your network. And Andrew, thank you for being with us. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Hello. <laughs> now, as we were talking about the entertainment world, you also, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction that I did off the air, you are a podcast host yourself, and if yes, you're interested, right. hey, do a little plug. Maybe you would like to have us on there. But you also are a talk show. Well, not really. Yes, you are a talk show. Talk show host podcast kind of like what I do. That's not what I wanted to say. I over, I bit my tongue when I said that. And so you also do voiceovers. Yes, that is correct. Uh, voiceover is what I primarily do. Uh, the the podcast just kind of came secondary to it. So the first question I want to ask you is, how have you been during the pandemic, and what is next for you? Oh, the pandemic was, I mean, it, for me, the pandemic was fantastic. Because when um, working as a voiceover artist, a lot of my clients were no longer in studio. So more opportunities uh, based on location were now opened up to me because a lot of places were running with like bare bone crews. And so being able to market yourself during the pandemic where everybody's staying at home, not only are you able to do a lot more from your home studio, but also because a lot more people were home, people were just pumping out media and pumping out media. Advertising as, as a whole was taking a turn in the way that it was portrayed. And so being able to keep up with those current trends of how it we had like those funny advertisements and then the pandemic happened and they started to turn kind of quiet and awkward. And then we started hearing a whole lot of new normal and and bright and we're now open again like following those trends i mean it's been great and actually the pandemic is what led me to start a podcast no i agree and in a couple of minutes i'm gonna 
Uh, one thing I like doing double interviews is uh, it's not about listening to me have diarrhea on the mouth. I like bringing people together to interact. That's why I said, you know, to David, hey, now you have two new people that would love to be a part of your network. So it's a win-win, plus you're making new friends out of it. But with that being said, I'm going to pass that over to you, um, David. Sorry, I had a brain fart. So, David, did you have any questions you want to ask for me or Andrew? No, but I, I can understand what Andrew was talking about. You know, during the pandemic, um, I was still moving uh, people in radio and television. And what people find amazing is I moved about four people who started working at their TV or radio station and never even set foot in that TV or radio station. They, they never even met uh, who hired them. They didn't meet anybody who they were working with until months after, uh, after the pandemic because a lot of the radio stations and TV stations were closed. Uh, a couple of them found out that they were short one or two people. So I, I just found it amazing that these people in radio and tv were getting hired but yet they never set foot in the city they were at they never you know they did their work from home and they never set foot in the in the radio station the tv station never met anybody who they worked with until some of them even like a year and year and a half after they were hired i found that the most amazing thing during the pandemic yeah, a lot of uh, voiceover artists were able to kind of cram their schedules a little bit because we didn't have travel. So I was able to wake up and do something for National Geographic in the morning and then go into a dubbing session and do a kid's cartoon. And then by three o'clock, go and do a video game character and then an e-learning module. And it it opened a lot of doors. Yeah, And I think, and I think Keith, I think a lot of your uh, viewers and fans would be, um, uh, would be, don't know this, but... You know, in fact, in the pand pandemic, a lot of people kind of started broadcasting from their homes, broadcasting from their spare bedrooms, closets, things like that. And I think they'd be amazed to know that they still do. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, radio stations and TV stations who found it economical. They found it safe and it was working. So um, you, you, you get that morning team that you hear that you think is working so great together. Uh, I got news for you. One may be in Phoenix. The other one may be in New Jersey, and they're actually not even working in the same studio. They're working in the in, in their spare bedrooms, but they sound like they're in the same room together. Right, which is part of the only um, – that's why one of the only industries that are really going back into studio is animation because they want to make sure that the microphones are identical, that they have the engineer there, so that way everybody sounds like they're talking in the same place while one person's not talking to a shotgun mic while somebody's talking into a dynamic. But, yeah, no, I agree. Well, let me ask you this. For, for actually, uh, you guys bring up a lot of great subjects. But the one thing I'd ask is what is about – Oh, I do. I don't know why it's echoing like that. It sounds like crap. <laughs> but anyway, I, hopefully I can edit that out. But the first one I want to ask you is, with everything that you guys accomplished, do you, how do you cater to the right audience? You know, you do voiceovers, but I also mentioned you had a podcast. Mm -hmm. you, you also have your own uh, TV network. And you have 80 shows. For me, I'm close to 1,000 episodes. And I have Everything from, you know, kitty, you know, kid stuff, you know, like human pyramids and Dumbo and Jumbo Bug, to professional wrestling, to people with disabilities, people without disabilities. So you have over 80 hours of what you're talking about, and I have close over 1,000 episodes. But it's great. You have all this content. The problem is how do you keep your audience satisfied and making sure they don't disappear. And David, I'm passing it over to you. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why you know people kind of sometimes poo-poo analytics, uh, but I mean that really is a way to tell you uh, who's watching, who's not watching. Um, you know, we uh, watch, we look at our analytics every day, and then we look at them over a period of day, a week, a month, three months, six months. We can find out exactly. Uh, like, for instance, we found out during the last uh, analytics that 55% of our viewers are women. Uh, I think 60% of our viewers were over 50 years of age. We could also uh, find out that what their education was. We could also find out what the majority of people, how much they earned. 
um, it was kind of it was kind of amazing. And the other thing, I think Andrew will tell you that you listen, you get emails, you get people telling you, "Hey, I I like this. Uh, I don't see this on TV. I would love to see it." Um, one of the things that we do is on Sunday we do us uh, we play old movies, John Wayne, uh, uh, Orson Welles, uh, Martin and Lewis, and I get emails every week from people who say that it's great nobody's playing those movies under interrupted anymore and we run them back to back to back and people sit and watch them with their grandkids and their their friends and you know but that's something that you know i don't know if it would be working if i wasn't getting the feedback from people you think that it's something the other thing that you have to be careful about is you may really like something and think that something's going to work but you need other people to kind of tell you no you're wrong um I have interns who work for me full time and a lot of times I'll bring things up to them and they'll say, you know, DB, you're living in the sixties, you're living in the seventies. We don't do things like that in, uh, anymore. Like, you know, the cartoons that we were raised when were the Warner brothers cartoons and the Looney tunes, bugs, bunny, things like that. There's a lot of kids today who never even saw a bugs bunny film. So if we run cartoons, bugs, bunny, porky pig, you know, we, we know that the kids probably aren't the ones who are actually going to be watching it. It's the parents of the kids that are going to be sitting down, the grandparents watching those uh, cartoons. So that's why when we're running ads, people will ask me, they'll say, hey, I saw an ad for um, uh, retirement during the cartoons, or I saw an ad for nano hearing aids during the cartoons. Uh, what, aren't you doing that for the kids? No, because we realize that the cartoons we're running, it's the parents that are watching. It's the it's the people like us, our age, who grew up watching the Looney Tunes that are watching those shows. I think probably, even though if the kids sat down and watched Bugs Bunny and all that, they would find them to be funny. But kids are so used to watching the anime and things like that, that you know they're probably not interested in watching uh, DB's Cartoon Corner that we run. But their parents and grandparents are. So Yeah, that's the whole target audience for Boomerang. That's the whole reason yep. Boomerang came out as a channel was because a lot of older generations wanted to see their favorite Hanna-Barbera cartoons come back on again. No, you're absolutely right. And you mentioned uh, during certain commercials, during channels, or actually at a certain time, if you're watching something, it kind of gets like, I don't know, you watch the news. And as soon as it goes to a break, he's like, this old woman fell down. She needs help. Or then it goes to a, to like a woman's like um, on the news. Oh, Big Ben! It's funny, but I know it's not meant to be funny. I don't know if you guys heard of um, Ben, and it's talk about medicine. And at the end, he's like, "Ben's like you, and he's on meds too." And so I don't know if they put that in to be funny or something. But as soon as that commercial goes off, then they're like a place for mom, and then they're talking about funeral service. It's like, holy shit. It's like, you talk about old people falling down, taking medication, and now you talk about cemeteries? I thank God so I'm not behind the wheel because I feel like jerking it, jerking it at this point. It's kind of like, I get it. It's funny in a morbid kind of way, but. Yeah, but probably that station has looked at their analytics as well. And found out that it's older people that are watching the, the shows, especially news. A lot of younger people don't watch news. They kind of catch it on their uh, mobile devices or they watch it at, you know, two to three in the afternoon when they when they can. Uh, older people kind of have been used to watching, sitting down and watching news at six and seven and watching the news at 10 and 11. So they want to keep those people. And I'm sure the research shows that those people are unfortunately retired uh, you know, need uh, Medicare, things like that. So um, th they're just playing to the audience that's watching, that's all. I mean, uh, you know, there's, uh, uh, regardless of what you hear out there, there's not a lot of 20, 30-year-old people watching news. Um, I, I think the one thing that the news uh, directors get wrong and, and these guys that are uh, working in, in the uh, upstairs offices, you can do anything, you can hire the best-looking 20 and 30 year old people in the world. You can sit around and have discussions about how you're going to get people to watch news. You can't. Somebody that age is either interested in news or not. So no matter who you put on presenting it, no matter how you present the news, people aren't going to watch it because especially, you know, that 
age group is so used to getting their news other places from their mobile devices, from their computer, from places like that, that they just don't have time to sit down and say, I'm going to watch news at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. But it's it's funny you should mention that. Then I have to go to my next subject. I can sum up the news in two minutes or maybe less. Rapes, murders, killings, beatings, and sports. (laughs) Somehow you throw sports in there to ask. And so, but you brought up a question, but I want to ask you. You watch CNN, you watch Fox News, you watch uh, CBS and NBC, and you're, you get these news stories. But don't you want, I'll give me an example. A lot of people say for me, you know, Keith, you should be on the news because we should have uplifting stories like yourself. But I was told by a couple of news people that doesn't sell rapes, murders, beatings, and sports, this is what people want to hear and want to see. Well, let me ask you that because you brought up about the news. Well, you've heard the expression, uh, if it bleeds, it leads. Uh, and unfortunately, that's kind of the way that uh, news departments feel. Um, you know, they want to put all the crime and all in it. Don't forget weather, too. There are people who actually turn on to, to get, uh, you know, the death rate that day, the homicide numbers and, and the weather. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a former news director, former reporter, and I decided with my network that I didn't want to do any hard news. I didn't want to do any of that. What I wanted to do is I wanted to tell stories. So we started a what we called a, a magazine show, like the old the PM magazine shows. And it's nothing but my reporters, my anchors going out and telling feel good stories, interviewing people with interesting stories, feel good. You know, people don't want to see two talking heads screaming at each other. Uh, You know, people don't want to see blood and guts. I mean, they really don't. You give them a good story, a good feeling about somebody who, uh, you know, has beaten the odds, um, good family story. People are going to want to see that every day of the week. So... Um, but I understand why news do it, you know, you know, why news has that philosophy, but I'm totally against it. I like the, the storytelling, the aspect of it and the feel good stories. And maybe Andrew does too. I, I hope so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Andrew, before I next you know, go to our next subject, I want you to take the time to answer. About how I feel about, about the news. Yeah. What we're just talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I agree that a lot of uh, the millennial and, and Gen X generation are not getting their news from news broadcast stations. They're getting it from clips on TikTok, or they're getting it from YouTube, where they're going and watching like Trevor Noah or John Oliver or or something with a little bit more comedy to it. And I think a lot of that is attributed to the low attention span that's slowly been developing. People don't, either they're busy or they don't have the the attention to sit and watch an hour-long special about what's going on um, as far as news. But but I have seen in media, a majority of the feel-good stuff that has been broadcast has all been local because people care about their neighborhood. They don't care about, uh, sorry for the viewers in Nebraska, but like some dude in Nebraska that found his lost puppy that was going through cancer. Like, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll go, aw, but you're not going to share that with friends. You're not going to like that. You're not going to engage with it. And what you want is user engagement. That's how you keep them. Once they start interacting with you, then you can play back and forth and see what plays the, the best. And so people aren't going to engage with, say, that dog in Nebraska. They're going to engage with the person, the high school football team that's right down the street from their house that their son goes to and spread it and say, oh, look how proud I am of my son. Or, hey, we know that guy. We go to bars and drink with him. I'm so glad he's doing well. And you share it with your friend group. No, absolutely. Now it's the last eight minutes. I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Yeah, David, the first one I want to ask you is what's coming up on the horizon for you? You you mentioned in January you're going to have some brand new shows on your network. For people who want to know more about your network, what can you tell us about it? And just throwing a little ice on that, have you worked with people with disabilities? Passing that over to you. Um, Make sure that I answer that last question so I don't forget it. Um, The the easiest way for people to watch us is on DBTV. Dot TV. If you've got a, uh, a phone, you've got a, a computer, 
That's the best way to watch us, dbtv.tv. Also, you can get all the information of all the shows that we have on there, all the news. We usually have a contest that we're running as well. Uh, our schedule's on there. We're always trying to evolve. Uh, I Right now, I think we have, as I mentioned, 70-some shows. By January, we'll probably have 84 or 85. So we're always looking for new shows, better shows, shows that are entertaining, uh, shows that are uh, exciting, feel good. Um, you know, that's that's kind of our goal. We also have DBTV2 that we just started, which is a, a second network, which we're going to be showing specials on, sporting events, things like that. Um, so um, we are on Roku. We're also on Amazon Fire. We're also on a few other platforms. But the easiest thing to get the information for my network, Keith, is dbtv.tv. Uh, and to answer uh, your last question, you know, we're always looking for – um, for uh, great storytellers. We're always looking for great shows. And, you know, we're always wondering whether we're covering or doing shows for everybody that's out there. We take pride in the fact that the name of the slogan for our network is something for everyone. DBTV, something for everyone. And sometimes we find out for, when people write to us uh, and call us that, you know, we're not reaching everybody that we should. So I encourage people uh, to please go to our website watch our shows and if we're missing if you feel that you're uh you, you, you're, you're missing something that you're not your voice isn't being heard uh that we're maybe missing a section of uh of the, of the country that you know somehow we missed all that please let us know because we want to remedy that and see if we can do a show like that so i appreciate you bringing it up keith as i said we're always looking to evolve we feel that we're kind of on the on the uh we have our finger on the pulse of everything, but we do miss. We feel there's a lot of, like, we'd like to do more for the veterans. So we just added a show called Valor, which looks at people in the military. Uh, people said that we weren't doing enough about um, uh, police. So we added a show called Dispatch Network, which is the same thing, which is following uh, police medical units around and, uh, you know, going into their homes and all that. Same thing about medical. We have another show now called Health 9-11 which is telling great stories and, and feel good stories about doctors and nurses and emergency technicians that are doing great work in their communities. So I, I encourage people, you know, some stations won't listen to you, but we do. We're always looking to hear ideas that people have. And I encourage people to get a hold of you or me with an idea that, Hey, I'd like to be heard. There's a section here of people that uh, are looking for a show like this or that. No, absolutely. And Andrew, yeah, um, so I've got a lot of things going on right now. Uh, my podcast just hit its 53rd episode. Uh, that has been fantastic. Um, I've been doing casting for HBO, but I can't exactly say what I've been working on. See, that's a part of the problem with being a, a voiceover artist and wanting to share what you have coming up is a lot of uh, projects involve NDAs. So I can say that I'm working in a couple of video games that are coming out. Three of them are AAA. And um, I've been working on a whole lot of dubbing and, and working on a little bit of casting and then focusing on my podcast and my kids. No, absolutely. Now, I do have a couple of questions for you guys off the air. But the one thing I want to say, for if you guys like to see a part two, our goal is 100 and more views. Once we release 100 views in comments, I know you guys are watching and you want to have these guys back on the show definitely they will be back on the show because i am doing a holiday episode you both of you are invited and this june june 10th is my 10 year anniversary both of you are definitely invited but like i said this will be played on facebook twitter linkedin and youtube all social medias like come and share but wrapping up i want to say thank you for our guests for being on the Key Fans Network and supporting people with disabilities. Now stay tuned for off the air for off the air questions. We're wrapping up. Until we meet again, it was an honor and privilege, and have a good night. Thank you, and God bless.